Hey, everybody. Welcome to Nation. You are here. What's going on? Uh, my name is Jersey, and if it's your first time checking us out, I really appreciate you uh, listening or watching or however you're checking out the content. Take a look around. Hopefully, everything doesn't suck, and it's not a waste of your time. Go adventure. We've done this now for 74 straight weeks, 30 minutes apiece. Come out on Friday, so have a look around. It's not a lack of content. Uh, if you are one of the elites, one of the cool kids, somebody who does all of those things, you've watched every episode, you've thumbs up the video, you've commented, and most importantly, you uh, buy your supplies from me, shameless plug, uh, what's going on? It is because of you that I get to eat extra cheese in my mac and cheese. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, if you want to order your supplies from me, my number is 862 312 2026. That is a cell phone. So shoot me a text. Best way to get a hold of me. Uh, let me know you got gear in your cart. Let me know anything and we'll get those orders. And it's like a virtual high five. So thank you very, very much. Um, I do want to do a couple shout outs today. Uh, Adam Davies, what's going on, man? Uh, and Ethan Hamilton, uh, what is up? You guys had some really good comments on the YouTube video last week. Um, and that is really where we kind of have the interaction. So if you are listening to this on a podcast, that's awesome. Most of our people that listen is on a podcast. But go back to YouTube, check it out, search it, WCR Nation with the episode number and comment. That is awesome to have the back and forth. Um, that's it. That's my spiel. I hope that's fast enough for you, Andrew. But uh, today we are talking to Mr. Geller. What's going on, man? What's up? What's up? Glad to be here. Let clear something up for... I call you Goler, Geller. What, what is the real, like, what's the right way? Uh, if, if you're back in high school, it's Goeller. <laughs> or oh, Goeller. Goeller. See, no. I didn't pick that one. No, no, no. The right, the right way to say it is just drop the O in the spelling and you'll say it right. It's Geller. Geller. Okay, so I said it right. Ross Geller from Friends, you know. But, yes. <laughs> there you go, right? I guess I forgot. The crazy German is in their umlaus above the O. They didn't know what to do with yeah. it when my people came over. <laughs> <laughs> they're like yeah just throw an extra letters so good yeah exactly throw an e on there that's how yeah Man, yeah so. what the heck it's americanized well my last name used to be like if you search back you know you do like the 23 and me kind of things my last name used to be o'cronin o apostrophe cronin but they said that sounded too irish when they came over and they decided to change that now you just save that for your wife <laughs> right there you go <laughs> so what's up man tell us about you i mean people know you you've been around forever you are like the best known magician window cleaner ever uh you're everywhere and uh you're just genuinely a nice guy but tell us about yourself like what tell us about your business how long you've been in business what do you do why are there so many books behind you tell us it all sure uh so background uh you mentioned the magic thing so i'll, I'll, I'll start there because that was a business there's no show without uh let me kick the camera again there there's, <laughs> there's no show without business uh, so I started learning business back then, and uh, I, I was fortunate to develop some mentors back then that actually steered me down the road uh, of, of books and <laughs> business and things like that. One of my mentors is almost a billionaire and was just like, showed me his library and was like, this is what made me my money. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Check but, notes uh, itself, buy books, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I had a love for that. I, I always joke and said I read uh, one of Anthony Robbins' books when I was like 10 or 11 years old at home by myself, and I read it over the course of a couple of weeks and I was like it either screwed up my life royally bad <laughs> or like made, made it awesome I haven't decided I have to wait till the end yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've had a love for books and just been a reader for a very 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 long time um, but the uh, so I ran a business but I ran a business as myself uh, as the product as the magician and I did very very well with that uh, I like to joke and say I did that until I made my first wife disappear <laughs> <laughs> nice so, <night. laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, after she disappeared, I went through a pretty dark time, as anybody who's been through a horrible divorce knows, uh, and kind of like went into a shell, went from this big extroverted character who was marketing himself, making lots of money, to like literally taking a stopgap job working for like Dish Network <laughs> up on roofs putting dishes on. Uh, uh -huh. Like just, I just like permitted in, slowly come back out of my shell and realized I missed the freedom of working for myself because it was yeah. amazing. And uh, ultimately, uh, while jotting down 
ideas for a business. I, I knew I needed low entry costs because all the money I made was spent and the ex took it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I knew that I needed uh, something that I could train people to do quickly and easily. And so while brainstorming about it, I had just finished eating a mop hits the window next to me at the restaurant where I'm at and starts mopping the window. And I've never, Aww. never witnessed the window cleaner. And I, so I have a phrase, uh, I like to own a couple of restaurants. And at the time that was up in Baltimore, that was a restaurant I owned. And what I mean by that is I tip extremely well. So that <laughs> I mean, even if there's a line, uh, they're like, Mr. Geller, come this way. And people look and like, what the heck? You know, yeah, there's yeah. your sales people, your, your people you're trying to sell to to lunch and everybody knows your name and everybody likes you. So anyway, I kind of own that restaurant. So I, I knew the owner really well. And I, and I asked him, I was like, Hey, uh, your guy just cleaned the windows there. Uh, how much do you pay for that? And it was like 50 bucks. And he was there for like 20 minutes. Really, it was like a unicorn in the, in the uh, yeah. storefront world. But, uh, and I followed him around. And, uh, and then after that, I went and sold a couple storefronts. And I sold, I, th I think I cold called five and sold three, which has never, ever happened again in the history of <laughs> cold calling storefronts. But it was a sign. And yeah. I, knew it. I didn't even own a squeegee yet. Uh, that was back in 2010. And then I quickly discovered that you can't make money <laughs> storefront easily. <laughs> right, uh, right. Uh, it's not to say you can't do it, but to build a business in it is difficult. You can build a great job doing it. Yeah. But the margins, uh, you're competing against homeless guys who are happy to clean a hundred windows for five bucks and a pack. You got to diversify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for, for me, uh, that led into research. I would use my vacation time and go, uh, uh, being the nerd I am, I read everything I could find, first of all, watched everything I could find uh, for like a year. And then I started going to uh, down in Virginia. There was a guy that I went and I worked for free for two weeks. Uh, I went to uh, South Carolina where my mom lives, stayed there and worked with the window cleaner down there for two weeks and just learned everything I could uh, and, about it because I knew nothing. And then figured nice. out, okay, residential is awesome. Mid-rise commercial is awesome. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. And then I lost my job. I was director of sales and marketing for the company I was working for. And uh, I was I was getting buried and moving. He didn't want me to work remote. And out of the blue, he said, well, you're leaving me anyway. So I've got somebody else to replace you. So I lost my job, like, boom, overnight. I was oh, like, wow. Because he knew I was leaving and he didn't want me to work remote. So I was like, okay. Yeah. And uh, my wife had seen the logo. She had seen all the work I had put into, uh, actually, we weren't married yet. We we're still dating. And she, she married me when I was a bum, out of work. <laughs> <laughs> nice, and, nice. So anyway... Those are the keeper ones, by the way. Those are the ones, you know, when they, when they marry you at your lowest, they can be with you when you're at your highest, you know? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Because I did not have much in savings and to lose that check. I was like, <laughs> oh, man, what am I going to do? And she said, look, you have this business design. Why don't you do it? And so the uh, going into the late fall and winter, <laughs> uh, late fall 2012, winter of 2013, <laughs> the great time to start a window cleaning yeah. business. If you need it's cash a, in the winter, just as a yeah. great peak of the spot. season, peak of the season, you know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which by the way, you're, uh, were you in DC, like in that area at the time, which, you know, it's yeah. always warm and sunny. So yeah. Uh, yeah, there's nothing like charging through three feet of snow to go clean your first house. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that, that was uh, the start of it. And then from there just ran and you find out the things you don't know, you don't know. Um, I had, a lot of experience uh, in business previous to this. I've done a lot of sales, a lot of government sales, a lot of uh, commercial sales, residential sales, you name it, sales training, sales managing, uh, marketing, all that type of stuff. And then also management of brand storage with up to 70 people. I've, uh, you know, my favorite job was working at a, uh, as a barista, as a general manager of a coffee shop. That was awesome. Nice. I think it was because I was like up to 17 shots of coffee a day. <laughs> everything is amazing when you're seeing like rainbows everywhere and yeah. exactly uh so i had had some, some what i thought was great business experience and then you run for it and it's totally different when it's yourself because yeah. i'm like okay i know how to read a pnl but then it's like hey who gives me the pnl where's <laughs> <laughs> where does that come from it's supposed yeah. to I've never set up accounting systems before i've never set right. up anything like this before so you find out very quickly what you don't know so anyway uh and then uh, flash forward a little bit more of that being a reader and all that around that uh, through that same time, I got really, really heavy into the, the copywriting uh, thing. A lot of people know me for that uh, from different things I've put out and presentations I've done that way, because to me, that's the end all be all sales and marketing is if you study that, you're like, you know, it. you're, you know, uh, yeah. I always, this, here's, here's the, the thing I always say is if you want to learn sales, study negotiation, 
because by the time you're into a sales position, it's a negotiation. You're trying to try to create a win-win for everybody. And you're just, right. you're just, that's more of the nature of it by the time you're in that sales thing. If you yeah, want to study we, marketing, study sales, all the sleazy sales techniques, all the, how the, <laughs> how the benefits and features and all that stuff, you know, that, that's, that goes in your marketing. That's great there. Uh, and if you want to like master it and really understand how to create conversions and create movement and, 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 uh, response, then study copywriting. Yeah. And that's really what we're kind of talking about today. So copywriting in general is not like McDonald's is copy or trademarked, I guess, but copywriting is in those sides, but copywriting is copy. Copy is like when you're on the radio, right? You read copy X amount of words per second is how you equate to how long it's going to take you, right? Copy is what sells and it can be print. It can be digital. It can be clickable or buyable, but something has to create a action. And that's what copy is. Copy has to create an action, has to create somebody to buy because you may have the greatest radio voice in all history, or you can, you know, read the greatest thing that's written. But if it doesn't translate to somebody uh, having that cause and effect, it doesn't really make much sense. And that's where a lot of people who want to do uh, their own businesses will put their own kind of marketing together. They'll write their own copy. I get a lot of that stuff. Hey, what do you think of this? And everybody's trying to reinvent the wheel. And there's so many mistakes that people can make that it's like a broken record. Like you're, you're writing a billboard on a postcard. Nobody wants to see that. You don't need to sell somebody in a service that you sell three of just because if you offer it, you know, that can be all brought up down later. So creating why people buy, you know, like buy me, buy, buy what I'm selling. It's clickable. It's purchase. It's calling, you know, back in the day, tracking numbers and phones, you'd see how things are working. So it's super important. People sometimes don't quite realize how important this aspect of the marketing is in general. Yeah, it, it's hyper important uh, to illustrate that when I did a presentation a while back, I took uh, one of the window cleaning resource cards uh, that uh, when you're one of the window cleaning resource members, I took one of the cards and I took off all of the words and I just left the phone number. And it was just a picture of a house with these little bullet points with no words. And yeah. I put it up on the PowerPoint and I was like, would you call that number? And it's like, I have no idea what they do. I have no, and it just, the point was, and that had a little Mario bullet come across and it said, words are the magic bullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they are, they really, the words are what sells, you know, the, the, a lot of people, they get hung up on the images, they get, which is great. You want the feel of everything to feel great, feel professional and all that. But the words are physically what sells. And understanding a couple simple principles can, I mean, you can up your conversion rate and your response rate tremendously. Um, and I don't have the math in front of me. I was trying to look for it real fast, but uh, we did a card <clears throat> that we sent out and it got your typical 0.5% response rate, which is very typical for like every, you know, a mailing. Yeah. Um, and then uh, playing with some of the copywriting techniques and redoing it, uh, the second one actually got 2.43%. <laughs> response rate, which is incredible. Like, like you know, if you're, you're talking about a 5,000 piece mailing uh, and with the conversion rate and all that, uh, the one pulled in, I think I want to say it was around $6,500, $7,500 and the other one pulled in $43,000. So yeah. there's a reason to study copywriting. Like it, it's, you can nerd out on a little bit. You don't have to go way down the rabbit hole like I have. Um, but what happens is you start and you're like, man, this is super powerful. How can I make yeah. it more powerful? And you just keep going if, if you're like me. Um, but just a few simple principles make it really awesome and you can yeah. fix a lot of things. And that's, that's really what's crazy is that's everybody goes, Oh, it's so expensive to advertise. You would spend a million dollars. Even if you didn't have it, you would go borrow a million dollars. If you were guaranteed to spend a million and make an extra million, you make 2 million back. Right? So that's where the ROI and making these things. E to DM is not expensive when it's bringing you in those numbers, like you said. So 5,000 pieces, what is that? Like $1,400, we'll say, just to throw out numbers or something, pull out my butt. $1,400 and you're bringing back 43,000, you said? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was I a mean, great card. And I've said it. <laughs> yeah, think about that. How many, how many $1,400 would people spend if they could make $43,000 back? Now, that's not gonna happen every time, but it's gonna happen a lot more if you understand the buy me, the like, why did they do that? Like, why did card number two do better than card number one? What, what are your thoughts on that? Now, we don't have the card here, so don't jump over to YouTube and look for this card, but we're just talking kind of in, in generalities. But what were the big changes that, that, that took card number one and made it into epic card number two? So the, the first thing, it boils down to a filter that I call a U-filter. Um, and this is something that is the easiest thing to do with all your marketing 
is take whatever piece of marketing you're doing, print it out so you can write on it or whatever, and you go through and you literally go through and anytime you say the word we or you name our company, you circle it. Use one color pen and circle it and go yeah. through. And then every time you say you, which is like one of the most powerful words in copywriting, when you're talking from the standpoint, not talking about you yourself, talking about the customer, you yeah. this or that. Anytime you're referring to the customer and you're speaking you, uh, oh, don't forget to count our as a we word too. Because yeah. <laughs> just our, you know. And Me, so, my, we, our. Exactly. And, and what happens is most people are, are exactly the exact opposite of what it should be. If you've ever heard of the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, yeah. um, you should only talk about yourself about 20% of the time and be talking about the customer 80% of the time. Everybody goes the opposite way. And yeah. then they wonder why it doesn't connect with your customer because you're talking about yourself and it's like being on a bad date uh, where- I was just gonna say, think of, think of like, when you date people, like if they're just sitting there the whole time that people are talking about them, well, I went to Harvard and it's like, oh, everybody wants to talk about themselves. It was kind of like the beginning of the show when you asked me about myself and I just ran with it. It was like everybody like, tuned out. So, <laughs> See, and look, look how happy you are now. See, that's how I got you. That's <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, but, it, but it's very, very true. Uh, the thing is, how do you create you statements, right? So how, how do you do that? Uh, you can take simple statements that everybody says, like we've been in business since 1960, right? Who cares? Yeah. Right. Who cares? Like, like really I'm not because hiring you in 1960. I'm hiring you in 2018. You could have sucked since 1960. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you could have not changed. You could still be using the same forms you used back in 1960. It yeah. does. There's, there's no benefit to the customer in that statement. Now you can turn that statement around as a use statement and you can put the benefit first and then add the reason why that benefits backed up with the date. So, yeah. you know, you can trust that we're going to get the job done on time and on budget uh, because of our experience. Uh, we've been around since right. 1950. Now you've given a reason that they care about how long you've been around because you've got a, a benefit uh, right. to the customer. And you're and speaking about them. Them. Yeah, you brought it to them as opposed to bringing, making it about yourself. Is Even when you listen to um, a national spot by McDonald's, they're talking about you. Like, you need a break for food. Come get you. Know, you. And they're talking to one person when it goes out to millions. You know, But mm -hmm. that, that's the same thing. You know the, You know what you're trying to say but it's how to say it. The insurance thing always comes up too. It's not, we're insured to a million dollars. You can feel protected by our $1 million insurance policy, you know? And it sounds silly because you go, really? That one thing will do that? Honestly, if you just look, get one thing from this podcast and you go through and you circle all your we statements and you turn them into you statements, I, I, I'll, I'll lay even odds that, that your piece will go ahead, A-B test it, shuffle them together. <laughs> send yeah. them out the old way the new way and i will and put you know different phone numbers on it track it do all that stuff their websites track it and see which one does it I, I will lay money that i'm not even a betting person so but i would lay money that 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 uh, the one that has corrected with the correct use statements will outperform by far and it's yeah. really easy it costs you nothing to do but maybe 20 minutes of time to go through and reword your we statements i can't tell you how many websites oh my goodness and, and, <laughs> You just go through and it's we. Literally every sentence starts with we. You'll see it now everywhere you go. Yeah. We, 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 we. And the thing is, it's, it's a natural thing to do. Um, and I tell the story about FedEx. When FedEx first started and they were first pioneering the idea of your package delivered overnight, they didn't have that message down well. Uh, and what they did was they, they spent over a million dollars and they lined up all their planes and their trucks and everything and they showed all of their stuff and it was the entire we statement this commercial that they spent all this money filming and uh and it was all about we can get your package there overnight right and it was yeah. just they literally ran the ad i think they said four times and they realized oh my god we made a huge mistake and they pulled it up back and the ad everyone remembers the ad everyone remembers is the microman guy who the fast talking microman from way back uh, micro machines rather i don't know if you remember yeah, those yeah. oh yeah fast talking dude and he went on there and he went talking fast and the message became your package overnight the uh, guarantee you know and yeah. it was a very you statement and you it makes you wonder would fedex have been here today had they continued down the we path because yeah. they were really tight on money when they first started that's the change of a word like sales is so it, it's in your brain. It's so like the biggest selling anything to convince a billing selling factor is, is stopping pain. Pain is the biggest selling factor. But yet in window cleaning, there is no actual, it's not like, oh my gosh, I cut myself, which I have a cut on my forehead for my stupid cat. I was trying to put them 
we had people in anyway it doesn't matter I'm trying to put a cat in another room and scratch me in the face but <laughs> i have i have an injury i need to stop this injury but it's not that it's the pain of doing something you don't want to do or do you know like this is all it's so mental it's so mental that changing one little word like that can can be amazing absolutely one other thing i'll add to, uh just before we continue with down the copywriting rabbit hole is that something I, i've studied sandler uh, anybody knows the sandler sa sales method uh, adam adam sandler yeah I've adam sandler, great sales i've method. studied a few of his <laughs> yeah yeah if you sold like him you probably do all right <laughs> right <laughs> um, but no no uh, like <laughs> sandler sales methods uh ziggler and and the grant cardone closes and the hard sales type stuff and all that you know i've studied all of them and, and i'm going to tell you that they don't work very well for window cleaning and i know i'm going to get some feedback and flack back for that and i'm okay with that it's but, it's not it's 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 the ideas that they convey also oh, one of my favorite books to read I, i'm not a reader like my book my bookshelf's on that side of the camera because it's pitiful and you'd, you'd cry. But the one book I've read multiple times is Grant Cardone's Close. It's like 101 Closes or something like that. Yeah, it's a yeah. workbook. But, but the idea, there's no way that somebody could like, if I'm trying to sell window cleaning, you're going to go, uh, you know, let me talk to my wife. And I say to them, uh, well, you know, it's my fault. We're not telling you what we've been trying to convince you. Now, if your wife loves you like my wife loves me, then you're going to definitely have a signature and she wants you to be happy. Like sign here and here like that. You can't do that at window cleaning, but the idea behind taking it, like these, all these books are the ideas that you have to kind of read into. Yeah. And I, I, so I read all the closes, I read all the stuff, but I'm going to tell you, forget them. And then occasionally you'll need one little piece of a close just to push someone over the edge. But here's the deal. Window cleaning is a luxury service. When you get that through your head, it'll fix your pricing. It'll fix your messaging. It, and it'll fix your sales process because in reality, I don't know about you, Josh, but I grew up, did you grow up in a house where you regularly had your windows cleaned? No, no. The first time I, I ever I had my windows have good cleaned, windows. <laughs> first time I ever had my windows cleaned was when I paid for a window cleaning company to come in and clean our windows so I could watch their process because <laughs> I was starting a window cleaning business. And I said, I'll pay them for, to watch what they do and see their service they deliver. Um, that was the first time. And guess what? I never died. Uh, nothing happened um, even so, even if you're elderly and you can't get to it nothing happens by you not cleaning your windows yeah uh, okay the windows are really bad and they're going to need restoration at some point if you want to sell yeah. it okay that's still it's a glass at this point yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly but it's still repairable you know it's 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 even the hardwood or threat you know which we, we you use and that's a pain you can use for continued customers is to let them know hey yeah you should really have your windows clean you got a brick house you should probably have it clean every six months our water can start forming in as little as a year, you know, under the right conditions, you know, so you yeah. can use those pain points to sell. But I'm going to tell you, if you are not following the discover pain method of Sandler and these things, and you start look, I don't know about you, but if you're going out for a luxury that you would really enjoy, like a spa or something like that, I, I don't, I don't know, a massage or whatever. Uh, if you're going to go out for something like that, you don't want someone pointing out all the pains of like, Man, I bet your legs are really cramping up, and then just, and, you know, like just ruin the like amplifying the pain. You you yeah. want to you want to you already know that this is going to feel good having this done, and yeah. you just want someone who's going to communicate, hey, this, we're going to make this absolutely painless for you. You're going to enjoy the experience, and and you're going to be able to trust us, and not it's not going to be a worry. We're not going to that that's a pain point that's real though is who's yeah. coming in your house. Right. So there are pain points you can amplify that way, but the window cleaning itself really has very little pain point. And so that's just a pet peeve of mine that I've, I've picked up on a lot lately I've, in, in mentoring and in, in coaching some businesses. I, I audit their sales process and they're listening to them on the phone. I'm recorded and stuff. And it's, it's like, dude, you had the sale. If you would have shut up, you had the yeah. sale a half hour ago. <laughs> and now yeah. you're going down because you're following this stupid sales script all the way down the road and amplifying the pain. Got to cover my points. Got to cover my points. And now the person feels like they're talking to a salesperson instead of someone who actually cares about them and their feelings. And that brings up the number one secret in copywriting and marketing. And it's the word empathy. David Carroll calls it uh, compassion, but it's empathy. It's being able to walk in your customer's shoes to understand what it's like to be in your customer's shoes and what they care about. And if you can do that, 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 I mean, it's, it's not easy to do. You have to become self-aware of yourself first. You, you have to really be able to project and figure out 
what is it like in someone else's life? Yeah. What, what do they care about? Because we're, I mean, most window cleaners who start out are not living in the mansions where they have their windows cleaned regularly and they go, hey, I'm going to have a window cleaning business, right? That's, that's not, generally speaking, where we come from. Uh, we come from scrapping and not having a lot of money to start. <laughs> and we probably never had our windows cleaned. We are not our customers. Yeah. And because so, of that, people that start window cleaning business, 99.99% of the time focus on price first, always. Why? Because we're poor and we're trying to start a business. <laughs> like, of course, price is important to us. It's not. Like, I was just going to say, uh, you know, selling face to face to people too. If I walk into a place and I say, hi, I'm going to be your window cleaner. You go, oh yeah, we get our windows clean now, but the guy just never shows up. I don't know if he's coming. I don't even know when the last time he comes. And I go, our prices are the lowest in town. They just go, oh, that's neat. Like you didn't hear what I just said. They don't care about price. They didn't talk about price. They talked about people not showing up. We have two ears, one mouth. Like that's super ch- corny and cheesy, but you got to listen to something. No, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Dead on. Um, there was something I wanted to say in the middle there and then I scrolled out. Uh, like most entrepreneurs, I have ADHD. So <laughs> that's the best. I tell people that all the time and they laugh, but that is like the best trait for a business owner. That's why all these business owners have like four things going on at once. That's why you can do accounting and also be doing an ad and doing this and doing everything. So ADHD. Yeah. Now the thing is, I'm fortunate because I've met some, some who have ADHD so bad they can't focus. Mine is sort of the opposite. When I focus on something, everything else disappears. <laughs> so I like yeah. I overcome it. Like I go like this, and then it's like nothing else is there. So yeah. uh, that's a blessing in some ways, but a curse in others. Anyway, um, now that we squirreled out, uh, there was something really important I wanted to say back there that was useful. What, what, well, we'll touch on it. If you think about it, we'll touch on it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in talking about kind of ideas and things, but what's the difference in your head from like uh, print media and digital media because digital media is huge. Facebook AdWords, Google AdWords, Facebook promote. What's the big difference? Like, can you take a picture of your postcard and throw it on Facebook and be like, all right, let's do the same kind of results here. What's the big difference between the two? Has to do with your audience um, to a large extent and what your audience is doing. Empathy, understanding what your audience is doing when they receive it. Uh, Someone coming to their mailbox, they're looking through their mail, that you've got a couple seconds to catch their, their attention. Someone's surfing on Facebook. Uh, you, you, they're surfing, they're not there to shop. Yeah. So you're a cold lead at that point, if they're a cold, cold person. Uh, uh, Google, on the other hand, usually, unless depending on if you, if you have it on search and you're not doing the display network, that's a different story, but search, people are looking for what you have if you have your keywords set properly. So uh, one of the things I, I get on people about too is, a lot of people are enamored by the madmen of advertising and they want to be ultra creative. And I go back to Ogilvy, uh, who's one of the great advertising geniuses of all time, who says it isn't, if it doesn't sell, it isn't creative. <laughs> right. So sometimes stupid, simple sells. So if someone types in window cleaner near me and your ad pops up and it's, and it's a value statement, uh, you know, uh, your windows, your windows clean, stress free. Or something simple, something that just, I mean, because you only have a little blurb, right? You know, on most of the, the search network, uh, on most of the display. Um, but going stupid simple really works when you have a hot audience who's looking. Like uh, one of the illustrations I use is uh, I, I put up a picture of a men's bathroom sign without even the word men, just the, the emblem. And I go, yeah. if you need to use the bathroom, you don't need to be sold on benefits and features or anything. You see this and you're sold. You're there, right? right. Yeah. You know? So it's the same sort of thing. If you just came out of, uh, if you just got a, a a letter that says you're going to be fined three hundred dollars if you don't get the green cleaned off your siding, for, you know, for for power washing or something like that, and you go to the end of your neighborhood and there's a sign that says power washing, uh, duh, it's it's, it's a need and yeah. a desire. It's sometimes simple works. So um, I do agree with creative and but creative as far as to a means, not just creative for creative sakes. And and, and I know. Josh, from knowing you for a number of years, uh, you're ultra creative and you've learned ways of tying in your creativity with what works as well. Uh, and, and, and I've, I've seen a lot of your pieces and that you, you get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing is, is that you can be creative different in one side of it, but still have the basic like message of, you know, 
Everybody wants to reinvent the wheel. Like I said, everybody thinks that how they do it, it's the Benji idea. Like if you remember Benji, Benji wouldn't like soft wash or pressure wash a house. He had to do it differently just because it was different. It took him twice as long, spent more in chemicals and it was a duct tape thing, to get, but it was different. I reinvented the wheel. I'm so smart because it, like you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. Being different doesn't necessarily mean changing everything about it, but maybe changing the color scheme or the, you know, the direct, yeah. I, I had one of my, my best Facebook ads and I don't have the numbers in front of me to tell you one of the best uh, Facebook ads we ran and we ran it for maybe two weeks in the spring was it was a guy, it was an older guy and he just has a head down and he's like the, the camera's kind of over behind him and it's just all the houses, like the windows. And it just says, I hate cleaning windows. That was it. And a phone number. Actually, I think it was a, a website. I think it was the website or the phone number website. Or, that was all it said. And I kid you not, it was just amazing because it triggered people. Just, it wasn't reinventing a wheel. It was simple. It was just, everybody hates cleaning windows. Something cool to do is ask your customers why they hired you. And yep. you'll get answers that you can then echo back in advertising. And they're uh, not the answers you think they're going to be either. Like, oh, why'd you hire me? Oh, the price? I, I haven't looked at the check or the price. You know, I couldn't tell you. One of my favorite reviews, because we, we sent out a survey to every single customer after, after we work. One of my favorite comments, because we have a section in our survey that says something I think can be improved, right? Which is the most valuable section we have. Yeah. And I would say probably twice a month we'll get this comment, which I love because it's really not something we can improve. They said, your service was absolutely amazing. I think the price was a little high, but honestly, it was really, really worth it. Yeah. And so saying our price is a little high, but they're also saying really worth it. Everything else is rated, you know, five star, 10 net promoter score, and then and this raving review. And then they're just like, yeah, your price is a little high, but you know what? It was really worth it. So, yeah. So, <laughs> like, so like I, I asked this, the last time you went out to dinner, like a super fancy, you and your wife went out to celebrate whatever. It was a great meal. How much did you pay for that meal? You remember how delicious it was. How much did you pay for that? I have no idea. No idea. Nobody does. Everybody just go, well, I remember it was a lot. <laughs> and I remember as the check came, I went, golly, but I don't remember it now. I remember the experience of it, you know. We're slow, yeah. mi slowly migrating into a discussion about value proposition and perceived I value. Um, and, and that's fine because – there's some that ties right into copywriting 100%. Um, because here's, here's something that I post it and other people have thanked me for. And I want to say this real fast. And that is that, that if you consider your value proposition, uh, some people perceive value as the lowest price. It doesn't matter anything else. There's always some people in the world who are going to perceive the best value as the lowest price. Right. Yeah. And then there's other people who will always perceive the value as the highest price because they always buy the best of everything. If it's high price, it must be the best value. It must be the best, best thing. That's what I want. All right. And then there's this middle ground where they're looking for a reasonable price, but a lot of value bang for their buck. And in and, and this middle section for me, that's where I hunt. Uh, yeah. I'm not going for the high end. I'm not going for the low end price wise. Um, and, but when you realize that, that people perceive value differently, it helps you understand why not every customer is your customer. And you become right. okay with that <laughs> because now you can niche and it goes, this is why I say it goes back to the copywriting. You're speaking to your customer avatar. You're speaking to who you can best serve. And, right. and it's, you're, if you try to be everything to everybody, uh, this, as a statement goes, it's very true. You know, being nobody to, or nothing to nobody. Right. You know, yeah. you, uh, Matt and I do this donut hole thing with, you know, you have quality can, uh, price, uh, convenience. And if you try to message all three of them, you end up in the hole in the donut. <laughs> You can yeah, yeah. slant two, but you're far better off harping on one and being what people want. And then there is no, no other choice. There's no one else who can offer what you're offering because they're all doing the same thing. They're all me too. We do it all. We're the cheapest. We're the best. We have the best people. Like, you know, and so we, that, that goes into value the design. Windows the cleanest. Yeah. Yeah. Value design, value proposition, and, uh, and it goes into differentiators and things. And that's a, we should, I should come back one another time. And we talk about how to find your differentiators. Yeah. Cause that's a, that's a really cool conversation uh, to Just, have. And to touch on that, I asked a question a couple of weeks back, like who's your customer? Like what's your USP, right? That's important. I thought everybody had it. I didn't want to know everybody's take. I didn't have one person come back with like a, a, like people were like, Oh, I'm, I just, uh, I'm really nice. Like people like, you know, like all these things are coming back and I'm like, I think I blew up on me. Like I, I'm not talking bad about any of you people. 
you still need to get better USPs, but like nobody came back with like a definite, here's my customer, here's why I sell. You got to find that all too to advertise and to figure out your copy. You have to figure out who your customer is. When you're new, that, those are the guys who just want everything. Those are the ones that, oh, I started a business. What do you do? Yeah, I do uh, window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, siding repair. Uh, I pick up dog poop. I can uh, shovel. I can, they do everything because they have to kind of pick it up, you know. But once you kind of realize who your audience is, like you said, you really idea who, or get an idea who your audience is, then you're talking to that one person. You're not talking to a mass of people, you know. And there's two games. You have the long game and you have the short game, which is survival right? Yeah. You got to eat, you got to have sales. So when you start out, I don't fault anybody who goes, yeah, I can do that too. I can do that too. You don't want to stay there because that is, that is really bad spot to stay. You're not going to be really profitable. The name of the game is profit. Um, that's going to put food on your table barely. But if it, but as you're going forward, you're going to want to chop off things you'll do and you're going to want to find out who your customer is and play the long game and messaging to that customer. You're going to be far better off than uh, yeah. A great book on that is Pumpkin Plan by Mike Michalowicz. If you guys have not read that, uh, it's a great book on niching. Um, or you can read one of my favorite books on marketing, Duct Tape Marketing, which basically has a 10-page section in it, which is the entire thing of Pumpkin Plan, <laughs> like eight years earlier. Um, yeah. I love Mike Michalowicz, though, so I'm not, not bashing him. Um, he, he expanded on that and went further. But, but both of those are great, great books, and they talk about how to really niche to your customer. And, yeah. and, and it's... As a, as a magician, to flash back there for just a moment, uh, my mentor told me, he says, when they want a magician, then they're price conscious. But if they want Mike Geller, there is no other Mike Geller, and they'll pay whatever right. you ask because you are only Mike Geller. So if you right. can set yourself up that there's only one company like yours, and it's not in necessarily a different technique, it's in your value proposition and, and in your corporate beliefs and you're speaking to your customer and, and, and how you design your service to fill that. Well, now there's only one company that can fill it. They'll pay whatever you want because yeah. no one else is filling that niche, um, yeah. which sounds very esoteric. And that's the, the, the downside of that is when you start talking strategy instead of tactics, tactics are cool because you can implement them right away. Strategy's hard. Uh, I describe business and coming up with your marketing strategy and your messaging strategy like this. It's like playing a video game in reverse. You know how the first games in a video game are typically really easy? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you're getting the controls down. And, by, and then by the time you get a little bit harder, a little bit harder, you're building the skill. And by the time you get to the boss level, it's hard, but you've built up all the skill. Yeah. Reverse that, and that's business marketing. <laughs> it is The hard thing to do is figure all of this out. And that's, you know, the, the, most people don't ever get past the first exercise in the first chapter of duct tape marketing in that book because it's it's actually spelling out what you need to do strategy wise yeah. it's this massive thing but once you get that all the rest of your marketing is effective and it gets easier and easier and easier going forward and it's like playing a video game in reverse <laughs> yeah that, that's the one thing that that's interesting i know we're we're a little off of kind of the the copy side of things but when you when you realize that this is a everybody does this because oh, I want I don't want to work for somebody else I want to have the long but nobody really gets the long game like nobody really gets like what are you doing now that's going to change what's happening in five years well I'm getting more customers now and and that's going to create more customers on the road okay yes but what is affecting that business then like everybody could look I've been in business only for what 12 13 whatever years I can look back and be like, well, those first few years, I know exactly what I did wrong. Like everybody can now. So why not look the opposite way? Like you're kind of saying and saying like, what, what can change down the road for what you're doing now? Yeah. I mean, anyway. one of my favorite books is uh, seven habits of highly effective people. And that concept of begin with the end of mind, like that is like, I, it's a mantra for me because it's like, where are you going? Where are you going to end up? And yeah. And, and it, there's an analogy that I like that somebody told me the other day. I can't remember who told me. They said, uh, most people die in a survival situation because of decisions that they made that they didn't know would have dire consequences later. Yeah. So <laughs> they make these decisions early on, like uh, instead of staying put, let's walk and try to find somewhere. It doesn't seem to have a decision, a benefit either way. And right. like in hindsight, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, so a lot of times. It's all, that, hindsight's always easier. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we do that a lot of times in our business, though, where we're making decisions in the moment. But that's why it's really important to project yourself to the future and look at where you're going, you know, and, yeah. and figure out what you want your life to look like when your business is put together, what what kind of business is going to serve that life, 
you know, are you going to be out in the field when you're 60, 70, 80 years old, still doing this? You know, yeah. uh, you need to be charging enough if you're going to be work a job. You need to be putting away, you know, so that what you- What route does it take to get there? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's nothing wrong with, with as they say, staying small and keep it at all. That's, that's a valid way of doing it. And I know guys who've done it right, where they've retired with a lot of money. And I know guys who've done it wrong and they have a business- for sale at the end that they can't get any money for it. So nobody wants yeah, that. And they're stuck into working because they're still, and you know, they, they did yeah. it. So, yeah. The first thing you could can kind of do too, to bring it all back is just focus on that advertising side and the copy the like the wording itself, changing that changes how you do that from here on out. Here's the best part about the copy it is digital stuff like Facebook changes algorithms all the time. They change what ads will approve, what they won't approve, how you can target, all that kind of stuff, it changes. And you gotta constantly keep up with uh, the digital world of advertising. Copywriting is a skill that once you learn it, the skill is learned and you'll have it for your lifetime. So yeah. once you understand a couple of simple principles in copywriting, uh, you're gonna improve your marketing for life. The, the ROI on taking some time and learning to copyright is incredible. I, I can't, I couldn't so talk. Valuable. Yeah, but imagine, imagine being, it's like a power up going back to the video game. It's like a power up for all your hits. You know, you're going to hit either way, but this time now, this is going to have, you know, take off 10 points of the uh, enemy's guy instead of one point, you know, right. so you just, it's just a power up. And, and uh, so I really recommend going down that rabbit hole. Um, there's, man, we could talk so much about practical side. I don't know how much time we have and how, how long yeah. you want to go. But We're going to have to get you back on. I, I, and if you're watching this, open up the conversation, go to YouTube, write down, let me know first off your copy maybe put it out there. We'll, we'll look it over and kind of get you some uh, uh, feedback on it and let me know what you want me and Mike to talk about the next time. Cause this is really going to like, this has to happen more often. Cause we could, we could literally talk for like four or five hours, like a Joe Rogan podcast where it's like, or Gary V where they're like just hours long and it's like, all right, well, yeah, I guess we're wrapping it up. I got a flight to catch. But. Those who know, know me, a lot of us, not a lot of people know that I'm, Real good friends with Matt Adwell. And, you know, he lives about 35 minutes away from me. I would say you're uh, on the next level from really good friends. I would say if I didn't meet your wife, that you guys were like life partners because you <laughs> couldn't see one without the other. Like if you don't see like Matt, you're like, whoa, what, what's going on? What's wrong? Like, oh, it's like you and, uh, and, and Michael Mole back in the that's day. Right. That's <laughs> right. See? See? Exactly. Exactly. A little shout out there. Hope he's doing well. <laughs> um, anyway, the, uh, yeah, no, I, I call them the other half of my brain because we push and pull against each other. You know, yeah. I, I'll, I'll throw out an idea that I've read and, 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 and I'm analyzing it and he'll throw out opposition and, and we'll even try different ways in our companies and find out which one works and come back with the data and go, yeah, that works better. And, or come some hybrid of both of our ideas, you know, which is yeah. great when that happens. And so it's just really valuable. I will tell you that if you view your competition as friends who can move you towards a goal and as a rising tide instead of competition you might be able to find a relationship like that where you almost partner without partnering and you can share all this data and this information and grow twice yeah. as fast anyway i uh i was saying about the joe rogan that all that came out of the comment about joe rogan because i was like man the first time i met matt i uh, was at a convention up in bethlehem and uh we didn't really meet to the end and we're both leaving and we get talking and it was like five hours later, we're still standing at our car talking. <laughs> and and uh, it was really incredible. We had been at parties, and same, we knew some of the same people. We had been at the same parties and things like that years ago. It was like, what? But, but I was like, man, I kind of wish I recorded that first conversation because I guarantee you people would have paid for that first conversation. It was, uh, when you find somebody like that that you have synergy with, and it's, it's, it's a great thing. So uh, the other night, uh, we were doing some security work for his church uh, over there. And he said, hey, you want to come over? And I was like, yeah. So we ended up sitting out there until 3.30 in the morning chatting, <laughs> marketing and when business. You get, when you get older and you own a business, it's different. Like, oh, man, dude, Saturday was crazy, man. I was out till 3.30. Talking about business practices and like, your business. It's so different than what it used to be, you know. The thing is, the thing is, it's always mindset levels that you're fighting for. You, you know, uh, when you first start out, you can always tell somebody's mindset by the questions. You know, when, when you're, when somebody's new, they're always asking uh, technical questions. How do you clean this? How do you do this? What tool is, do you do this? That's yeah. kind of the graduated one. Which one's best, right? Yeah. That's the next step up is uh, what, what tool is best. And, and I would talk to you if I wanted to know what tool is best, honestly. I would just go. <laughs> I like I'd that. Call you the shameless plug too. I like that. I like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I stuff and 
I don't want to, I'm at the mindset now. Where I honestly don't want to occupy my time with the, the, the technical yeah. that much. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to trust somebody who's in the industry. Trust, trust your vendor. Um, uh, absolutely. Uh, that they know what they're talking about. Josh is not going to lie to you and tell you, I, I've had Josh tell me that stuff is garbage and don't buy it. Um, <laughs> yes, so it I'm sure Chris isn't happy about it. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I know Chris will do the same exact thing. Um, yeah. You know, which is, is, is awesome. And so you find that trust level. That's the same thing you want to do in your copywriting and your messaging. So yeah. your, your window cleaning is be the trusted advisor. Anyway. <laughs> I see. It all comes back. It all comes back to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, buy your stuff from Jersey. That's the message. Yeah. <laughs> so I like that. I like that. Speaking <laughs> of, I appreciate you guys' time and checking us out. And listen... Check us out. Come over to the conversation on YouTube. Start a Facebook post. Do any of that stuff. It's, it's, it's really awesome. You get the back and forth. But if you do want to be one of the cool kids, one of the elite, somebody who buys your supplies from you, please do that. 862-312-2026. Shoot me a message, text, email me, josh at windowcleaningresource.com. Smoke signals, whatever you need, and we'll get it set up for you. And uh, I really appreciate you guys checking us out. And we're going to have to do this again very, very soon. Next topic. Let us know what you want us to talk about, and uh, we will definitely go from there. So until next week, just go out there and be epic.